Welcome to Discretion Advised. I'm John Hill here with Mark McNamara. Welcome to the podcast. Good morning, Mark. Good afternoon. Good evening. Bonjour. Good morning. This is early for you. I do not know how you do this. You are some type of athlete or psychopath. I went to the gym at six. No. I did. Because to do these episodes... I don't know. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts that are like marathon. I don't know who's sitting around listening to like three hour episodes of shit, but it takes us a couple hours to record these and we're always waiting maybe on whoever celebrity is coming. So looking at my day, I was like the only way. Anyway, this is boring. I had to go to the gym at six, but I also have people painting my new apartment today. Well, one person and I'm going to help. Um, and then I, I have my show tomorrow night. I leave. Anyway, we're a little bit yeah, I go to on my whirlwind tour of the East Coast. I go to Provincetown. I go to New York City where I'm going to see you. And then you're going to go to my show and then leave to go to Janelle Monet. Also, Beyonce is performing the same night as me. These whores are coming for my gig. I know. I'm, I, I go to Green Room 42 to get tickets for John. Are there any left? If not, just, just show up there and there'll be standing room. You can take my seat once I leave to go to see yeah. Janelle. <laughs> I'm surprised that Janelle Monae is on the same night as Beyonce as well, because I would I feel like maybe the queens who have already seen Beyonce will go see Janelle or something. I'm excited. We have second row. Like I am just, and I heard she comes out into the audience, so I want to. I'm touch getting my a head shake lover. from Cameron. Are they well, not on the same well, night? She's, she's like, no. Beyonce already performed in New York. Yeah, well, I don't then know what John's talking about. Well, listen, I just asked someone important to come to my show on the Port 26th, authority. and he was like, "I'm going to see Beyonce." <laughs> maybe he meant Janelle Monae. Or maybe he's saying it in a different city. In another city. <laughs> there we go. Maybe he's going to a different city. Anyway, I'm happy to see that you're in your lesbian denim era. Mark, That's right. Looking denim good. and diamonds. Mm-hmm. So, John, you're, you're uh, seen in fan mail as out now on Naked Sword, where you interview Derek Cage and Sean Xavier. So go check out that. And then coming up after that, we have a movie called Art of Swallowing. Um, I don't know if we've announced it yet, but here it is. We have a movie called Art of Swallowing. Do you uh, swallow loads, John? Is that something you like to do? It is too early for this. We have to gotta ease. If you went to the gym, you could work out your throat too. Oh my god, I I need to be like massaged into that kind of direct question. (laughs) Fine. Cameron, so, do you what like is to the swallow plot, loads? What is the plot? Of, what is the plot of Art of Swallowing? Art of Swallowing. Um, it's a movie. Your a, filmmaking. It's side. an equestrian movie about horses. No, it's a it's a movie about oral sex. Um, let me. Okay, let me. Let I me like to elevate me, you from just a porn director to the art of cinematography and storytelling. I'm giving you an opportunity to rise above just it swallowing jizz. Like, what's the ethos porn is lovely film. we are risen above there is nothing down about porn honey so don't try it um it's come a super beverage let's start with that yeah yeah it is <laughs> it is <laughs> i don't know yes sure i i enjoy all of that and i definitely will be watching the film um but back to my scene uh how do i look in it and how's my acting beautiful you are just, you really are a beautiful human being. So it's hard to make you look bad. And I've tried. But like, the personality just, is cringe. No, no, it's not. You're great. Or mine. <laughs> get that lip liner. Get that lip liner out, money. Um, I have another idea for a porn. I want to get your idea of um, why you apply your uh, Maybelline. The masked fucker. You know how they do the masked singer? Now that I can get behind. Who's singer? What if it's like you're just your dick or your hole is showing and you fuck somebody and you had to like guess who it is? I like that. Is there like a consent problem there? Like the masked fucker. Yeah. Well, I think the idea would be the person, you know, both people agree to do it before you shoot it. You know, that would then... You know, they would say sure, and they the the game would be to have the sex. I've seen some films that do have the face obscured, and then at the end, maybe they get three guesses. Maybe there's a panel um, of regular ass people saying, "I bet that's Nicole Scherzinger," or "I bet that's Christina Aguilera," and then they rip the mask off, and it's Derek Cage. By the way, Derek and I have been DMing since our last episode. Oh, are you gonna mm-hmm. go to Utah? Well, he's in Paris right now, then he's in Berlin and whatever, and I'm not going to go to Utah, but he is going to come to L.A. at some point. Okay, I see I see this happening. Are you um, 
Are the DMs hey. risque? Uh, no, but they're sweet. They're nice. They're like mildly flirty and like you know, nice. They're not like Any photos shown. No, 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 no. Okay. No, that would be I don't bad. assume that a porn star needs that from me. You know what I mean? Like they're seeing so much. It's so different. Like when people think that, think that about me too. They think, oh my God, you're a porn director. You've seen it all. Like it's intimidating to have sex with you because you're going to judge or this or that. It's so different. Personal I don't feel intimidated sexually, camera. but I, I just feel like they're probably in the, in the case of a Derek Cage who I like, I, he's nice. He's funny. He's sweet. He's cool. I think. And cute. It's like, I don't think he necessarily needs right up front. Like, let me see that dick. I think he's, I think, personality and is there a connection because he said a date you know like is there something there in that department more so than like you know normally yeah people are so thirsty to like see the home goods speaking of home goods would you I go went to that on store a... what when oh to decorate your new apartment mm -hmm. your Didn't new apartment it. he gave us a little tour the other day um it is really nice it is as you can see, I have an eggshell white here. I am going to lime wash my walls. I am turning into a DIY. Like, like is lime wash? It's chic. It's what Beyonce did her office. Lime wash? It's a what kind of mean? textured paint. Yeah. Okay. Word. You're going to be into it. This white wall behind me is soon on the next episode is going to be so cunt. You're not even going to know what you're looking at. It's going to look like sh suede ass walls, sugar walls. I'm I went to Home Depot. Line. I went to the gym and then Home Depot and then this episode of the podcast. What? Home Depot was awake that early? They open at seven. A lot of people were there bustling. What they time is it where gym. you're at right now? Eight? Eight thirty? Eight twelve. My clock is wrong on this computer. It says, yeah, it doesn't say. Mark has so many new compu computers. He has <laughs> computers. so many laptop, laptop, computer, computer, and he's like, they're all crashing at all times. I I would love to tell you what happened, but it's a, a, such a long story, and I'm going to rip this company apart who's destroyed my computer. But let's talk about happy stuff. We have merch, merch for sale. Go to discadpod.com. We have discretion advised merch. There's a link to buy it there. And Do most we have of our sexual stuff is merch? like logo. No, why does it always have to be about sex? Yeah, well. It's just like there's mugs, there's sweaters, there's t-shirts, there's hoodies, there's pullovers. Um, but we're going to add some more stuff to that. So if you guys want to write to us and say, hey, we would love this line on a shirt or we would love, you know, is there a fish in me? Like, tell us what you want. We'll put it on whatever you want. This is like Janet, all for you. Yeah. And so wait, Cameron, send me and John some shit. Give, I want a hoodie. I want a big oversized hoodie. Can you send that to me? A hoodie? What size? Over. Okay. I think it would be a large. Extra. But let's for talk about the merch. Frame. Like, I do think specific to our show, you know, um, I got a crop top. I don't know if that's available, but you gave me a crop top with our merch on it, mm -hmm. uh, with our logo and stuff. I, uh, I wore it in Fire Island. It was highly supple against my breasts. Um, and coffee mug that would be good but i do feel like uh, like it, there's a difference to me in like we oh i could see a cock ring or two a discretion advised like you know what uh comrade a towel we do a we towel. should have a towel a yeah. little discretion advised mm -hmm. wipe wipe mm -hmm. um beer cozies beer cozies, mm -hmm. a mouth guard in case you have a wiggle fit, like things like this that our fans would really relate to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would. I can't wait to get my so I'm Christmas to is right around the corner. Don't start with that. Oh. Why? I'm There's trying already to sell Christmas merch. decoration up in stores. Oh, that's true. <laughs> just, I don't I don't care about the holiday. I'm just trying to give people a reason to buy He wants his stocking stuffed. Yes. So did you see the the aliens that are now like in these satin coffins i don't understand how people think that could be real like why are you keeping aliens in like a satin coffin with dirt on them do you think that they're real well i think they were being two different issues i don't think it, oh. the satin coffin means they're real or not i think if they were real i wouldn't mind they if they kept them in a satin coffin i think it's just a kind of a clean sterile way to preserve them maybe also it was from mexico they're very ritualized in their presentation of dead mummified objects maybe 
Um, but it was the Mexican government. Uh, they said that these were uh, alien bodies. And then they did an MRI of them, live streamed the MRI and did the scan. And there was no um, manipulation of tissue or anything like that. But then I also was reading that it's human bodies that were just kind of like it, tightened it up real small. <laughs> I guess I never thought that aliens would be tinier than us. Like in my head, aliens are bigger than us. So to see them tinier than us, it makes them like, oh, they're cute. Well, I am under the impression that aliens probably are nothing like us and are probably, they could be microscopic and they could be invisible <laughs> here. You know what I mean? And if they're here, they're probably very small and they're not, they're like, interdimensional beings who know how to time travel and space and time whatever and they're like globular amoebas that are just like f flares of light so like i don't think if we get an alien it's going to be like oh here's like a little baby version of us i think it's going to be like boom some smart person is going to be like oh my gosh like there's a third retina that you can't process their bodily i, I don't think it's going to be a little baby in a coffin no Great. A Let's little move dirty on to baby. Bad topics. <laughs> dirty, dusty baby. Dirty I'm, baby. Listen, it makes sense in my mind what I'm trying to say. It is 8 a.m. Yes. and I am not a scientist. That's, you know what? You keep going. You keep going. You got this. Pringles has dropped a caviar <laughs> collaboration in response to the Salt Lake City, uh, or Housewives of New York drama, rather. The Pringles team is clearly made up of Bravo fans. I love a Pringle. Um, I'm okay with caviar. I'm not sure if. You know, people put caviar on baked potatoes, so a Pringle is like a dry, flaky piece of baked potato, so it kind of makes sense. I really do not like caviar. That is straight up fish, period. And you're just gobbling it up like you're supposed to. I mean, you're making that face, but isn't it? Like, isn't it unfertilized egg, which is like fish menstruation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I have had we we i think you could say that about a lot of different stuff i think you could eat like saying like seared cow flesh is disgusting or like raw yeah, it is all of it's gross so i don't know if it's that much more disgusting you know it's a fishy egg i don't crave it you know but i do basically my whole thing is like i'll do whatever pringles tells me to because i have a process i lick the dust off one side and then i lick the underside and then I gently press it to the top of the roof of my mouth. And then I kind of suck on it until the um, mealy potato chip becomes more of like a paste. And then I swallow it. And then I repeat it until I reach the end of the fucking can. And then I buy another can. And I eat a, another one. And I like to start with like the sour cream and onion. Then I like to go ham on a BBQ. Crisps and Caviar Flight. Uh, it's a Pringles Original, Sour Cream and Onion, BBQ. See, they know what I'm talking about. Along with the Caviar Company's okay. Classic White Sturgeon Caviar and Smoked Trout Row. She is part of the LGBTQ community. I love a chip. It's a, it's, 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 that's going to be a hard swallow for me. What else we got? Real Housewives of Atlanta Reboot is reportedly in the works. Production is demanding fresh new peaches. Uh, peaches, fresh new peaches. Yeah. You know, good for them. Sometimes Enjoy. the Texas hops out of you. Good luck with finding uh, new people. It should be exciting, you know? There's so many great people that were already on Atlanta. Just bring back the ones we want to see. Uh, now listen, I have oh, not seen you. Shannon Bedore's mugshot, but she was, uh, of course, involved in a DUI, the DUI being her. And yeah, no one's seen it because she has like some type of like order blocking it from everyone to see it. But we've all seen the video clip of her doing it, her doing her damn demolition day derby. So we've seen it. We just haven't seen the mugshot. Yeah. And, but did and you see that she was with like Alexis Bellino was reportedly at the bar and saw mm -hmm. her drinking and Alexis, uh, gave a little quote. When my girlfriends and I arrived for a fun night out together, it was soon brought to my attention that Shannon was also at the same restaurant. Mm. Shannon and I did not interact that night, but it greatly saddens me to learn that she may harbor negative feelings or resentment towards me as I was not involved in the Jim Bellino's lawsuit against Shannon. So that could have been a trigger for her, seeing Alexis. She was also, she was on Watch What Happens Live with the, the Trace Amigas the other day, now just yeah. Dos Amigas. 
and she seemed off that night. Like Vicky and Tamron were Tamara were both on, and Shannon just seemed like checked out. So I don't. She just. At least she's getting help now, but someone could have seriously got hurt. Her dog was in the car. Archie was in the car with her. I know. It's such an un unfortunate situation. I think, like, I have compassion for people who have this kind of accident and kind of uh, situation. But, like, it's just, like, don't drive drunk. You know what I mean? Like, don't I know especially... people who have died. I know people who have killed people. And it is a life changer for everyone involved. Like, it's such an intense thing. And I know that it's, like, preaching to the choir. But also, it does need to be said. Like, learn from her mistakes so you don't have to get in that same position like i yeah I, it's, it's just like it, it's, it's so dangerous pisses. out there anyway that like even when i'm riding driving here from the gym at 7 a.m i'm like who's still up and what crazy ass person mm -hmm. is like on coke from the night before like who's gonna crash into me i hate driving in la it is so crazy um I, the thirst for the mug shots and stuff is such an american uh embarrassment to me it's like we all know that this has happened. Let her recover in peace. Let her have some rehabilitation. Take a minute. I don't need a statement right now. Like, this is a humiliating, humiliating thing to have a DUI publicized like that. It's so embarrassing and you should be ashamed. It's like, give her a little bit of grace to go off and uh, get a little help. I don't need to see the mugshot. I've seen what she looks like. I've seen what she looks like real drunk. I see it maybe every week on tv i i'm on the fence with it like i i'm so happy that she's getting help and i understand i don't need to see the mugshot either but i'm also like pissed at her because she has so much money she could have had a chauffeur she could have had a driver she could have done so many this wasn't the only option she had so many choices to make with that much money she could fucking took a helicopter home and she chose to drive so it's, it's unfortunate know. but the mental state that she was in probably didn't also, not for nothing, can I right. just say, like, people were so quick to be like, you know, no, no, she's not an alcoholic. She's, she, and it's like, saying you're an alcoholic and figuring that out is sometimes the best thing that can ever happen to you because then you stop fucking up and doing shit like that. There should be no stigma about saying, like, you're an alcoholic. It's like sometimes that is, like, a great thing to realize about yourself. So you start on a life that is not um, marred by... DUIs and bad decision making and shit like that. And you look cuter and look more snatched and your liver is not fully distended at all times. Not You're distended. Close. Well, shit, see, this is why I don't drink. I don't want my distended liver. Um, we have a big announcement coming up at the end of the show, so stick around. We have an announcement, but before we get to that, we have Willem and Matthew Camp coming on, our hustlers that have had their fingers in everything so we're mm. going to talk to them and get some advice on how to hustle and do everything so stick around we'll be right back oh leave it right there for one second leave it right there leave it right there leave it right there <laughs> <laughs> we found the spot welcome back to the show John Hill here with Mark McNamara. Mark, take it away. What's happening right now? Where are you? Where are we? Where's everybody? We are joined by two of the biggest hustlers in the business, Matthew Camp and Willem. Welcome, guys. Hello. Guys. What's up? Do we say guys nowadays? We say welcome, everybody. It's fine. Ladies and gentle thems, whatever. <laughs> I, I reply to everything as long as there's like kindness or coin at the end of it. Yeah, John, calm down. You're like right, right. Six, seven feet tall. Your pronouns are fee, fi, fo, fum. Like, oh, yeah. burn. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about people like... who've done like everything. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Tell I also how feel like you feel, guys Matthew. Gen general neutral anyway, you know? Yeah, I think so, too. I'm just making sure because you never know these whores on TikTok people. always calling us boomer are like, don't be all guys about guys or who are not guys and shit. So anyway, how about, hey, y'all. How hey, are you? Welcome, y'all. So y'all have been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, we're talking about people who have like hustled and can do everything. I'm going to give a, a long list as fast as I can oh, of wow. things that you've done. Willem, you've done podcasts, race chasers, hot guys. You have the mom network, books, suck less, actor. A star is born. You have cartoons, super drags, Emmy nominations for East Siders, director, all access, all air, access, all areas. You're a singer. Matthew, you've done iconic justice with Willem. You have a cologne. You've done reality TV with Hot House. You've been an actor and 
sock job and mess and you've done a porn for me rise of the sirens like you both do you ever take a nap sleep when you're dead oh yeah all the yeah, time sleep when you're dead <laughs> like i sleep what? wherever i can honestly what? subways cars trains anywhere why not can i can we do a little superlatives real quick about the stuff like what are you most proud of from like the long list um, um that i'm alive <laughs> Honestly, most people figured I'd be dead by 32 from something dumb that I did. But my most proud moment, I think, is is uh, A Star is Born, just because it was a culmination of everything I've ever wanted to do in my life and, like, all my skills and improv in my mouth. Mm-hmm. You do have a famous mouth. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I love On the third breast. Worldwide. The third breast uh, <laughs> is always a great look for you. So I just gorgeous. feel like if if you can be more, why not be more? And three titties makes me feel more pretty and more special. Mm. Like a gold tooth, another spot to be shiny. Like I'm a drag queen. I'm supposed to be an event every time someone sees me. And you are. And we all have our wristbands today. So thank you for being here. Mm-hmm. Matthew, what were you most nervous to do? Um, porn actually, like shooting actual pornography is super nerve wracking because there's so many people on set and they're all expecting a very specific kind of performance. And so there's a lot less, um, you know, movement that you are like allowed to do or that's expected of you. Whereas like reality TV, it's like come up with a funny joke, say something funny, act silly. It's really just like top of the hat, you know? And Willem, what was the biggest nightmare out of all those? <laughs> I did a show with Matthew Camp called Iconic Justice. <laughs> no, I'm, it's I'm airing kidding. Now. That was actually airing now on Out TV. Uh, every week. That was actually Are those a real wonderful cases? experience. Legal yeah, cases? Yeah, those people, they got problems. Wow. <laughs> I'm Jacoby and Myers. Um, it was actually a lot of fun to shoot because, like, <laughs> I feel like after 20 years in the business and Matt's eight or nine years we have valuable life advice because people have tried to fuck us over at every corner of the street and cul-de-sac and we know how to get around or to get people to avoid the pitfalls that we may have fallen into um to help others so i feel like our life experiences at this point can be useful to others in the lgbtqia atmosphere on like how to cover a cold sore or how to like hustle your way through an insurance scam or something like that Mm. you know (laughs) <laughs> That's invaluable advice. I've never had a cold sore currently. Where there's a Willem, there's a way. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I've had a hot scab. <laughs> Are they softening? <laughs> so that show's airing now, and where can we find it? Because I need to bone up. It's on. If you have Apple TV, it's on there with included with your subscription to Out TV. Um, and I think Daddy TV has links to it on their Instagram. Okay. Correct. They make hot. They make slag wars. They make um, the hot house stuff. They're they're one a wonderful like LGBTQIA production company. Oh yeah, they're the did best. they make I that daddy them. house where they had this um, Stormy Daniels hosted show about the yes. daddies in the house? Yeah, I watched that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did you like it? A home for brilliant. I did like it. I watched. Okay. I mean, I only watched one episode, but I did like what I saw. I thought she was an amazing host. Actually, I thought she was really charming and great. She is another one who can like take her life experiences and like impart them yeah. to others. And such a good sense of humor too. She was really funny. Um, and low lights. Did I was shocked. Low lights. Because <laughs> she's I always know. been Bring a blonde. Back the low lights. <laughs> the low light. Very rock just of love. Just in time. Yeah, just in time for autumn. It's all that's coming back. A, a low slung jean. A you know a tea back. You know a going out shirt. Just a glitter kind of strappy Some halter. Yeah, <laughs> not too much. Back. Just a hint. <laughs> Just an there. outline of the pocket. <laughs> so on That's the show, you you're judging people. You're giving advice, Matthew. Uh, are you like the bailiff? Yeah, he is the bailiff <laughs> similar <laughs> okay, to I'm the bailiff? Just, I'm getting an yeah. image similar in my to mind, the bailiff, but like the bailiff. Like she's the bailiff. also the stenographer because she's constantly texting. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this just in but matthew you do give good advice if i remember back you predicted the pandemic when we were in hawaii filming uh rise of the sirens we were in honolulu filming and we sat down for dinner and you're like there's gonna be it was i think january 2020 this was and you're like this is gonna be major this is gonna take over everything and we're like okay 
And guess what? You were right. Do you want more Are you psychic? Psychic predictions? Yeah, well, what's no, going to happen follow, next? Are we okay? I follow political news and science news. And there's thanks to like computers now, there's like so many AI models of everything. So it's really like down to a science. My next prediction is that um, society will peak in 2080. And then um, after that, we're going to start having severe population decline. We'll all be dead by then. So it doesn't matter. Speak yeah, for yourself. Six years. 56 years. We can make 56 years happen. I'm hitting 100, honey. Yeah, Don't bitch. try it. We got this. <laughs> I'm, I'm out 2082. Uh-huh. Pro- I mean, probability I'm going to peak and leave. Very low. Probability Leave while it's still fun. <laughs> Were you but born in 82? Yeah. Same. 84. Nice. Yeah. You're 84? Okay, so we're going to be yeah. we're, we're going to be around for this math. You don't or are we? You tell us. Statistically probably not. Life expectancy has dropped okay. every Great. every year for like the past 5 years. Well, you can't spell prediction without dick. That's right. Stop exactly. I want I want to <laughs> live. I want to live. <laughs> All right, speaking of living, William, you were in several girls' group. You were in the Triple A girls. You were in DWV. You were in Destiny's Child at some point. Is it easier <laughs> to work solo or with a group? And Matthew, um, same question with porn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I think it's it's more fun to work with a group as long as everybody's on the same drugs and vices. Um, <laughs> I I have more fun with with like group shows in general when it's like a whole bunch of girls instead of just like a Willem show. Um, so yeah, I like I like groups way better because also then it's like if nobody comes, you're like, well, it's not all my fault. But people do people do usually usually at least one person Same. always comes to at a Willem show. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Drag queens and porn stars. This is why we go together. We have shared That's life experiences. So true. We're yeah. basically okay. the same thing. Yeah. So, Matthew, what porn star would make a good drag queen? Oh, my God. Like, any of them. Are you kidding? There's no such thing Ban- as a bad drag queen. And if you're a bad drag queen, that makes you a good drag queen. Yeah, like Busted in New York, you know? I love exactly. Busted. I love Busted so exactly. much. My favorite porn drag queen is Bambi Coule. Wait, no, oh. no, 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 no. Oh. Bambi, ba- Bambi. Not Bambi Coule. Not her. Um, Liam Riley? Bambi. Yeah, Shanji's yeah. daughter. Laquifa Wadley. Uh-huh. I'd say Bambi Laquifa Wadley. I'd say you want to be the most of the most. If you're a shitty drag queen, you want to be the shittiest. If you're a pretty drag queen, you want to be the prettiest. I think mediocrity makes a bad drag queen. Same with like porn That's, too. Okay, so then that leads me into my next question, Willem. I think we all could say that we have fucked somebody that really, really enjoyed it. And like say that you had an okay time, not great. But if they really, really wanted it again so bad, like they were begging for you to do it again, would you just do it to give to charity? Um, I know I've been a pity fuck. So if it makes me feel good to be like a star in the room, if I'm going to be worshipped and like just like. Yes. Yes. But like don't try, don't try to make me do anything I don't want to do, you know. Okay, so if the answer is yes, here's my question, and thank you for saying yes. Drag race. Like, we want you back so bad, and even if you didn't have a great time, would you just come back and fuck us, please? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a moot question because it will never be an option. RuPaul will not be in a room with me willingly ever again. She's not willing really? to do anything she doesn't like ever again, and she knows I'm trouble, I'm a liability, and the last things we said to each other were fuck you and fuck you too, bitch, to our faces mm. because... I don't like how she treats people. And I'm at a point in my career where I work with people I want to work with who treat me how I want to be treated and who treat others how they would want to be treated. And RuPaul, she has a lot of great qualities, but she does not treat other people how she would want to be treated. And when I treated her how she treated me, she couldn't take it. And she just needs to be reminded that she's a drag queen just like everybody else. And she's a she's a peer at this point. She's done a lot of great shit, but she's not going to get a... a carte blanche pass for the crappy things that she's done against trans people against her own community and against the family that she purports to um, matriarch over Period. what if you like did like the- a uk versus the world without her I, i'm not in i don't want to jump through hoops anymore unless they're on fire and they have money around them <laughs> like okay, i'm not make it happen to- get the hoops and I, the cash <laughs> i'd rather produce stuff for other drag queens coming up and like and do my own competition for girls who actually like 
need drag mothers or something, you know, because once you do drag race, idea. you're thrust into this thing with a with a 40 page mm-hmm. contract and then they don't help you after or they they bind your hands behind your back and say, jump in this tank and learn how to swim. Oh, you need to make this flight and this is how much you should make. We're going to take a portion of it and tell you who your manager is. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't want to shovel bullshit unless it's going to make my own garden grow. Maybe Bethany Frankel can come in and unionize drag queens too. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, you're like someone's got to do it. The unionization, like Maybe. a drag union for queens. I mean, equ- Equity is trying to do it. Equity is actually trying it. to make strippers it happen. Strippers can do it in North Hollywood. A drag, yeah. you know, there can be a drag queen union. If a stripper union in North Hollywood. Yeah. Is the is the long rumor that. They now put tapes on the hotel doors of contestants because of you, true? It's not a rumor. It's true. It's 100% true. But all reality shows did that kind of stuff. R- Drag Race just caught up with it after season four had many, many girls leaving the premises. But we were leaving the premises to like mostly go get stuff at CVS that we had given them money for that they didn't go and get for us for days and days. And then, of course, some girls went out to Mickey's like to see Sahara perform. Some girls went out for Dick. Some girls went out to get tanning or get their hair blown out. But like they drove me and Fifi to get tanning. They didn't care. We went to the mall. We went to the parks. We went to the beach gas station to get beer like it was a different time and then once they realized that me talking about production and like had come into play as a reason why girls were saying oh he should be gone they couldn't have us talking about production on camera and that's when they had to like Mm. cut the fucking shit and lock us down Mm. we don't do any of that at daddy tv people are allowed to do whatever they want they have complete free will Hmm. Collusion. That's good. Okay, so then come over to Daddy TV. Now exactly. you are in the sh- you were in the show Hot House, Matthew, and this is the worst segue ever. Ever, but your house was burned down. Like <laughs> it was. What yeah. happened? There? Your personal house. I honestly your personal I'm, house. Yeah, it was five. It was like five in the morning, and someone arsoned my house. I we only realized it because I had it on video from the front. Um, porch. What they do in the house? Yeah, it was like five a.m. and me and my roommate made it out. I have no, I still have no idea who did it. There, I've heard, oh my, that's heard anything terrifying. Yeah, but totally. you saw someone do did something. They what? They threw a yeah, match, they had a like Molotov a full cocktail. Mask on and, um, Damn. They had like gas, like big things of gasoline. Girl, who's your enemy? I don't have no enemies. Honestly, That's the you're thing. the nicest person <laughs> ever. I remember you yeah. from back in the day when you were pulling Bianca's balls at Bingo Balls at Soho House. Like you That's are right. the That's nicest right. person ever. Let's go like, ahead who, and blame Bianca. For it. Let's have? just say she did it. Bianca. Yeah, it was probably mm-hmm. Bianca. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. Bianca fire, loves me so. too. She's great. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. I have no true. idea. Is it? Is it? Scary. Well, I'm, we're happy that you made it out. You guys ready for game time? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. All right. Me. Slip on your poise ultra thins because we are about to take the piss out of you. John and Willem, here's what I want to do. So me and Matthew. Matthew, do you have water or urination standing by? Could you take a sip of something? Mm. Um, yeah, coffee. Want me to go get it? Okay, perfect. Me and you are going to take a sip of a beverage. And Willem and John, since me and you, like, I laugh really easy, and so do you, Matthew. So we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock, and whoever spits last wins. So Willem and John, mm. you just had to make us laugh. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So just hold the coffee Set. in my mouth. This is going to be great for my teeth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get a crest, crest white strip later. Okay, has the clock started? What does okay, Michael that's... Jordan put on his toast? <laughs> Space Jam! <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing now, too. <laughs> Why couldn't the bike w- stand up? It was too tired! <laughs> what do you call a lesbian dinosaur? lick a lot of puss. puss. <laughs> um, do wow. you want to see a human diorama? My computer is soaking wet. <laughs> what did I, I win? win? Mostly because I didn't I even just... understand <laughs> jokes. 
You didn't understand diet, that last one? It was very clear. Spit all over your hole. <laughs> that last a one was very clear. Is, is like a shoebox that you make like a little nativity scene in, like for oh, school right. projects. <laughs> like a diorama. Yeah, that was a diorama. tight joke. I am dioramaing right now. Yeah, you're surprised I it's not like odium for my dioramas. Is my camera still working? Like literally the whole computer is wet. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> it's one okay. thing I'm always good for is a laugh and an asshole. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy to have spit on it. Finally. And poppers. <laughs> you gave me the best is... popper hookup with double Scorpio. Double Scorpio, oh, God, yeah. I'm a double Scorpio, Scorpio girl. Monster. They make good I'm stuff. Okay. Scorp. We're gonna they play another game fridge. called. Did they fridge. really give you a fridge? Yeah, I sell it at DragCon for him. We're going to play another game called Still the One. I'm going to name things, Shania. qualities of a man with just one. And you tell me if it's a deal breaker. Would you date or fuck a person? Uh, okay, with one yeah. felony charge. Would you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. One yeah. ball. Sure. Yes. I sure. already have. Yeah. A one credit score. Hmm. I'd Maybe. fuck, not date. Yeah, fuck. I'd yeah, fuck. sure. <laughs> okay. Takes one shower a week. <laughs> not the best. Burning Maybe. man. Depends. Yeah. Burning man. No, I'm I'm not. Mm -mm. Not. Okay, I'm one out. tooth. I have one yeah. tooth only. Is it in the front or the back? It's on the bottom. <laughs> the side. It's a side. It's a side tooth. <laughs> it's a side tooth, then sure. Yeah, it sounds great. No, yeah. because when I would try to kiss them, I know I would like French kiss them and I'd try to feel their <laughs> one tooth with my tongue. Ah. Right. You'd get do they have, yeah, do they put teeth <laughs> in to like go out? Mm -mm. No, no gum flipper. only. Just, they gum. just flip our the... Trinity K Bonet is not in this. It's just the one tooth. I'd make out with okay. Jiggly, but she's got a new new frontal. She's got a new frontal. <laughs> Jiggly drank Raphael Alencar's jizz on stage in Fire Island. For, I have video of it. <laughs> I love Was that. Was that her that all-stars talent? <laughs> Should have been. <laughs> he put it in her Long Island iced tea. She stirred it around. No gagging. Right up. <laughs> Little yeah. chisley. See, um, that but... is a drag queen. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is. And, and a, a trans icon. Yeah. Send them the video of it. It is uh, It's fascinating. Yeah, I, I want it for Beatdown, is, down, please. The energy Jasmine is also right so low. It it, even though they're on stage, it's like it comes out real slow. It goes in Wait. real slow. It's very Jasmine, low energy. Jasmine Rice LaBeja topped you? Is that what you said? No, <laughs> air dropped it. Air dropped it to me, the video. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, bless. Thank you both so very much for being here. What What do you have to plug? Where can we follow you? Um, we saw the check diorama. out Iconic Justice, first of all. New episodes every week. Um, follow me on my OnlyFans, Matthew Camp, backslash OnlyFans.com. And obviously, I'm doing stuff with my anus and my balls and my dick and other people's <laughs> genitalia as well. Please enjoy. Perfect. Perfect. Happy okay. Easter. I am on OnlyFans also. You can follow the Mom Podcast Network for shows like Very Delta, Hall and Closet, Race Chaser. Uh, you can come see me in Titanic in New York, the hit off Broadway yeah. musical. I'm coming. Until, oh, come until January 7th. Um, I'm also on Iconic Justice with Daddy TV, and um, there's probably more things that I'm forgetting. Uh, what else? You're gonna am host I doing? a living nativity for the holidays inside that hole. I am uh, Gina. What am I forgetting? Do I have anything coming up? I'm at my I'll manager's house in Brooklyn right now. Wait, is that Gina? Yeah. Oh, tell her hi, Gina. Hi. Mark McNamara says hi, and Matthew. Hey, babe. Oh, I'm gonna be in Australia in December too. That's what I forgot. Follow and him. and Oasis for Halloween. Fuck yeah. All right. Perfect. Trust. Thank you both so much for being here. We have a big announcement when we come back. So stick around. We'll be right back. Ooh. Thanks. Bye, guys. Who let the dogs out? Daniel Nardicio did. Welcome dogs. back to the show. I'm John here still with Mark. Look at that cute little doggy. Aww. Which one? <laughs> Where? <Go on> with... <laughs> oh, Bo? Yeah. Here's the one. That, here's How many my dogs pictures. do you have, Daniel? I have two. Oh. This is Tabasco. Oh, my God. And... Spicy little bitch. Yeah, and then there's Bo, who's running around the bed like crazy right now because there's a fly in my room, so he's trying to chase it. Is he I named I after Bo Tabas Butler? Go. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. That was two questions at once. Yes, and what? <laughs> yes, yes, and what? <laughs> 
Dracula. Um, okay, so Daniel, you have been in, you are a nightlife impresario. You have been in this game. But let me bring it back to the 90s. You were an opera singer in Berlin. Like, what? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I was an actor. I moved to Berlin because I couldn't figure out what to do with my life. I was going to ACT in San Francisco. And so I moved to Berlin and started working as an actor. And that kind of segued into working in operas as an actor. And then I started getting opportunities to sing. So it kind of took me there. Then I developed something called Meniere's Disorder, which is like an inner ear disturbance. If I go into my upper register, it's like the speaker's blown out. I didn't know what it was for years. I thought I was losing my mind. And then... Get ready. Name drop. We just grabbed that. Kristen Chenoweth and I were doing a show at Carnegie Hall. Oh, actually, I was doing Alan Cumming at Carnegie Hall. She was a guest. And I'd read just before I did a little wiki search that she had Meniere's disorder. So I said to her right before she went on stage, because it's always a good time to get someone, right? I said, uh, you have Meniere's disorder. And I said, I think I have it as well. I just got diagnosed. And she's like, do you have a problem getting on planes now? And I said, yeah. And like, mm. and in her contract for Broadway shows, it's written in that she is able to grab onto her partners because she has vertigo. Wow. I have Meniere's disease, but I have it in my butt. Yeah, totally. It feels totally. blown out in the upper register. It feels, it feels like it feels blown feels, out. I was just like a blown out speaker just blown from out. being... Yeah. yeah. And I have to grab onto my out. partner. <laughs> Some I love it. You know, I'll be the judge of that. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Do you still okay. sing, Daniel? You're a venue Not owner. really, I mean, you're because a huge I... promoter. You ever hop on no. stage? No, occasionally I will, but now I just keep things in the lower register. So a lot of times I'll do Ike Turner to Amber Martin's um, Tina. There we'll we do go. Proud Mary. You know, <laughs> left a good job down in the city. Like, that's all yeah. I can do now. Yeah. If I go high, it still feels weird and probably always will. So, and it cre- created this crazy thing where I couldn't get on a plane for like two years. And I was doing this show with, let me get this other name, Carol Channing. And I had to go out to her house in Palm Springs for a photo shoot. And I got to the airport and couldn't get back on the plane to come home. And I didn't know why. And it just created this sense of imbalance. It was just why The whole experience How did wild. you get so, back from Palm Springs to New York? Well, I Train? did. But it's, it, there, right. I literally sat at the airport calling a friend of mine, just not knowing what to do. I could not get on the plane, watching planes leave. Wow. And finally, after a while, I white knuckled it and came home. Oh. Um, and that, you guys, is an exclusive. I've never talked about this with anyone. <laughs> Stop the press. Stop the Play press. Play some so sad you, music. I want some you sad are music. Now, <laughs> you own the Ice Palace, the iconic Ice Palace in Fire Island. You have taken over and you have gussied her up. You've worked with people like, here's some more names, Liza Benali, Joan Collins, Cheetah Rivera. But your shirt, I had to bring it up. I survived Patti Lapone's writer. What was that like? 17 pages, it's, you know, uh, her uh, writer is legendary in Broadway. Like, it's legendary. Even when I talked to her years ago about doing something together, she's like, Daniel, you have to see my writer. Like, it's kind of legendary. So when I finally got the writer, which took a while, I think they don't really just send it out to anyone because it's so specific um, I was gobsmacked, but at the same token, I was really excited. I mean, she Is it could like have asked snacks for anything. or water. What's what are the, like some specific kinds of food? the room temperature to the degree, mm. the dressing room, which is a different temperature to a degree, floral arrangement, but it's the uh white the the the, the, the green to the flowers, what flowers, the percentage, the size of the vase, the diameter, like it is insane, but it's specific. And what I love about it is it leaves no room for error. So I had the best like week with her because it was like, you just have to get her what she needs. And she was a doll. She was great. But I just so did this because I thought Island. it was so fun. Her show she was, was yeah. Songs from a Hat, where she, her solo show, where she takes a lot of songs, she picks them out of a hat, the songs that she's famous for, that she knows. Right. Um, and what are some of the songs that she sang when she was at the Ice Palace? Well, it was, what I loved about that format was both shows were different, but you know, what was great about it was almost every song, every hat or every song that she pulled out, she would go, oh, this is from a Broadway show I was in. And eventually mm-hmm. it just became like a joke because she's been in so many fucking Broadway shows. Um, each show was different, but she did, you know, the big ones. I mean, both of them she did. I had a dream, you know, and the audience went crazy. Um, also, um, what's her big one? For, I, I don't really know Broadway. Uh, Broadway don't that Cry well, For Me, Argentina. Big, oh, yeah, that was the one. But what was amazing about it, because the audience was gay, 
was there's this point where they just started humming with her. Hmm. You know, and Usually one that's night, annoying. Yeah, no, and then uh, both nights the audience got um, trouble from uh, the music man, which was incredible because the audience was like going, trouble, trouble. Tr-. I mean, <laughs> you can't have a better audience than like 400 theater fags looking at their idol singing along with her. It was like wow. magic. The second night they got ladies who lunch, the first night didn't. So mm. each night got something really special. It was really cool. It was an amazing experience. And one well, I hope survived. to do again next year. I think we're doing it again next year. She liked Oof. it that much. Well, at least yeah. now you know what to expect. You got this. Yeah, now In, I have the writer, so it's easy. Yeah, the, it doesn't sound easy. It sounds really difficult. Um, you worked with another famously difficult human being, Bianca Del Rio. In oh. a pilot in 2005 called Road Trip, that logo passed on because they weren't interested in drag. Can you believe that? Now that they were made by drag? It's such a weird thing, too, because they were sort of condescending about it. It was a little bit like, I think they were at that point where they were trying to be like, we're going to go with like hot guy. You know how they, gay pride parades are like the drag queens are embarrassing. You know, um, I felt like Logo was very like, we're going in a new direction with like Dante's. Was it Dante's Cove or was that here? They had all these like wacky shows mm-hmm. um, and none of it worked. And then they, I think we were the last drag show they passed on before they went up with RuPaul's Drag Race, which was a great choice. RuPaul's Drag Race obviously is legendary. And mine would have been too expensive to... We were in a, on a bus that I bought and traveling cross-country with a bunch of drag queens. The insurance would have been outrageous. I didn't even think about it. But you also had... You had Ben Andrews, right? Porn star Ben Andrews. Ben Andrews, Wendy Ho is in one uh, one episode. Uh, Sweetie, Robin Camille, both have passed away since. Unfortunately, not Bianca. Um, <laughs> Bianca. <laughs> but that was not your only work in porn. In 2008, you joined Playgirl, and you were the one responsible for Levi Johnson, the former fiance of Bristol Palin, showing his goods. Like, how did that? How did you even approach that? I, uh, it's so funny. It's the same thing. Like people ask me about Liza Minnelli. How'd you get Liza Minnelli? It's like, I just asked her. Mm. I literally looked up Levi Johnston in Wasilla, Alaska and got his phone number and called. No. And someone answered the phone and I was like, can I speak to Levi? And they said, yes. And I, and then it was his manager tank. It was like a security guard. (laughs) So our bodyguard or whatever at the time. And I just talked to them and talked them into it. And that was sort of it. You know, it's like, uh, that's sort of always been my thing. People are always like, I don't understand how you do it. Like, how do you do like sexy, like underwear parties, but then work with Liza Minnelli? And it's like, well, if you're good to these people, they want to work. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like, and they don't mind the underwear party stuff. I mean, when you get to like racier stuff, sometimes they get a little like, I don't know, Daniel. But um, no, it was an amazing experience, except that it blew up so national that like, then he wouldn't show his cock anymore. And that kind of disappointed me because mm-hmm. Did I you felt see like cock? then... Yeah, it looked like a it looked like a an upside down Oscar, like an oh. Academy Award. Meaty, like it had like a smaller and head than the shaft. Okay. Well, yeah, a little bit. You know how how they sometimes have a smaller head than the shaft. Oh well, well good good for you, Levi. You you should, should, easy you insertion should. then. <laughs> I'm look that up. Okay, are you ready for a big announcement? We are announcing now that we're doing our live finale to this season of Discretion Advised, November. 10th at your new establishment in New York City, Red Eye. Thank you so much for having us, Daniel. What has been the process of opening this place? Well, I'll never do it again. I'll tell you that. But the good news <laughs> is that if <laughs> if you do it right, you don't have to do it again. So hopefully it'll it'll work. And I basically owned a couple clubs before Bedlam, and I owned Club Coming with Alan Coming, and and then I worked in so many nightclubs in New York. And I basically said uh, during the pandemic, I had two employees, Sam and Taylor, who I loved to death. And I was like, I can't keep them on payroll. I don't know how long this is going to happen, you know. <clears throat> so I went to them and I said, I want to build the nightclub of my dreams with all of the information that I have now. You know what I mean? Meaning like the dressing room, you need a dressing room and the sound and this, all the things that were mistakes at other clubs or good things at other clubs. I want to make the club of my dreams. So I sold my stake in club coming and I said to them, if you want to work, uh, I'll make you owners. Uh, This is your one opportunity to become owners. Like, you know, but unfortunately I can't pay you anymore. So you're gonna have to do sweat equity. And they both said, yes. 
So we started the process. We found this empty space on 41st and 9th in Port Authority, right across the street. It's like so seedy, the block. It's so perfect. Right around the corner from everything, but it's like the block is like real sketch. Um, and then we started. Why the name Red Eye? So when we started looking at the space, when it was completely just gutted, there was nothing there. We kept seeing people roll by with their suitcases, and we love coffee. Mm. Um, so we drink red eye coffees and me and my partner Taylor, we would be on trips and we'd notice we always get red eye coffees and people and red eye flights. So it has sort of a vibe of like travel and you never know where up you know, all night, up all night. Yeah. You never know where you're going to land with us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, not and brown then we eye, did but... this, yeah, exact pink eye, brown eye. Sometimes sure. we get that too. And then we uh, dug out the basement. Um, it was, the basement was a crawl space and we dug it out like, um, eight feet and created a little men's bar called the cockpit. And that's where like all bets are off. That's That's more like where I do, I do this party called devil wears nada, which is, you know, completely naked. And I do my stuff that's sort of more, you know, prurient is the word I think down there. So it's kind of worked out really well. Upstairs is podcast station. We have a coffee bar, their cabaret shows. And then downstairs is like never a drag queen yelling, make some noise. Never. Oh God. That's my rule oh, down there. John, never, don't never bring your wig. It. Don't say that. <laughs> so what can people expect on November 10th for our finale? It's going to be 8 o'clock Friday on November 10th. Um, how many people can fit in this place? How many, how many people are we going to have? Uh, standing, it's about 250, 300 seated. It's like Ooh. 100. So it depends on what you want to do. Um, and we can talk about that. We're going to do seated? Yeah, people need to sit. So let's do like I 100. need to sit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hunter. All right, Daniel, where can people follow you and find you to find all your parties and uh, find all these beautiful things? Daniel Nardicio at, uh, at um, any of my socials, Instagram, all that stuff. Ding, that's, that's John's timer. His painters are here. Thank you so much, Daniel, for being here. And we will see you on November 10th at Red Eye. And thank you so much for listening. You can watch the full episodes over on YouTube or on discatpod.com. And make sure you're following us on all the socials at discatpod. That's D-I-S-C-A-D-P-O-D. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.